All right, welcome back to Papa John's Pantry. Remember to like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And if you have any questions, comments, reach out to me at papajohnspantry at gmail.com. Today we are making meatballs. Um, I'm making a big recipe. Um, you can take one of those recipe calculators you can download for free on your phone and, and shorten us up if you want. I just, I like making a big, big-ass recipe for... Uh, my big ass family that we, uh, I'm going to take these and freeze them in the smaller bags. It's just easier that way and they, they turn out absolutely delicious. So, all right, let's get to it. We're going to be using four eggs, two cups of breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of caraway seeds, two tablespoons of minced onions, two tablespoons of Italian seasoning, two tablespoons of adobo. I got five pounds of beef, well, that five pounds of sausage, five pounds of beef, and if I didn't say it already, we're going to be using four eggs. All right, so I'm going to just start with the dried stuff first, and the eggs, so my hands are keeping my, you know, my hands aren't getting all full of stuff. So give me just a second here. In fact, I'm going to turn you off while I crack these eggs. Okay, so my eggs are cracked. I'm going to add in two cups of breadcrumbs. Again, I like using the Italian style of breadcrumbs because they already got a little, a little bit of uh, seasoning and parsley and stuff in there already. It's easy. It's all two, 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 and two. Two tablespoons of adobo. And this is one of those things that your recipe doesn't, you know, you don't need to be sitting there sweating over your exact measurements. Don't. It's a little less than a tablespoon grate. If it's a little bit of a heaping tablespoon grate, you're not. You're not going to make. Uh, you're not going to make things too. Uh, too seasony. Same thing. Two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning is just a great blend. Of spices. <laughs> it's all good. My wife's standing here next to me wondering where the random finger showed up from. <laughs> Say hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. No, oh, you're going to be that guy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and so I don't mention it. I don't, I specifically don't list all the ingredients on the videos and I, I mentioned them during the videos just because I want you to watch me make this stuff to see if you're comfortable with it and so take notes as you as we go along because for some people this might be hard other people this might be uh, we're also using two tablespoons of minced onions I'm sorry um, but I want you to watch the videos beforehand just so you get your um, you get your comfort level there I don't want you just, okay, let, let's buy all these ingredients and be like, wow, that's that's way over my head. I don't feel comfortable doing that. That's why. Copy as you go. Listen, watch. Give it a try. Okay. Now, just for the sake of saving some video time, I'm going to just take these, the five pounds of sausage, five pounds of hamburger. I'm going to put them in a the bowl, and then we're going to mix it up. Okay, I'll catch you when it's time to mix up. Now, I... I was actually able to find Italian sausage ground up for a change. Generally, that's hard to find, and I always end up having to buy patties, which is just as fine. I just, at the end of the day, I'm just using equal parts beef to equal parts Italian sausage. So, whatever you can find. If you are lucky enough to find ground Italian sausage, great. If not, just use patties. Just taking the sausage out of the links is just a big pain in the ass, so just don't get the links. Right, I'm going to add this to it, and then you, we'll, we'll mix this in a sec. Alrighty, everything's in the pan, so it's mixing time. I know so if you don't like touching raw stuff, get yourself some gloves. You can get them at the dollar store, family dollar. You might end up with them, them cleaning gloves, but you're fine. You know, those big yellow ones that come up to your elbows. But if you hate touching, you hate touching raw stuff in that, 
put some gloves on. No reason why you can't. And there's there's really no getting around. You can't. You have to use your hands. There's no there's no using a spoon or putting this in a mixer or anything. You gotta you gotta suck up it suck it up and use your hands for this. Unfortunately, for you with the queasy stomachs out there and the interwebs. All right, so we're just gonna keep mixing until this is thoroughly mixed. All the breadcrumbs and stuff in the bottom will be, like I'm speeding up the mixing by lifting them from the bottom of the bowl and putting them on top. And you're just gonna keep mixing it in, mixing it in like you're making a big giant meatloaf. And we'll be making meatloaf one of these days too. It'll be another video. Homemade meatballs are so much better than store-bought meatballs. If you ever take the time, especially the cheap stores, you read the extra ingredients with all the the fillers and stuff they put in them. I mean, like we're using breadcrumbs, but breadcrumbs are breadcrumbs. They end up using all kinds of soy stuff and preservatives and, you know, Everything we used was, you know, 100% breadcrumbs, 100% meat, and some spices. All right, so this is just about mushed up, mixed. And you'll know when you're done because it'll be a uniform color. There won't be big pockets of meat without any seasoning in them. Or likewise, any big areas that are just breadcrumbs with nothing else on them. Got about another minute of kneading or, kneading or so and then this is, this is all set. And if I had to guess, I bet this is gonna make about 50 meatballs. We'll see how close to a guess I am. I know I guess at a lot of stuff out there on Cyberland, but I bet we're gonna get 50 meatballs out of this. All right, I'm gonna wash, this is all set. I am gonna wash my hands and I'll catch you for the next part. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is I just wanna show you, I'm gonna be putting, I'm gonna be um, rolling these in the balls, putting them on some bake sheets. And if you only have one, there's, there's no race to this. All right, and then we're gonna, if you wonder why a lot of homemade meatballs, if you go to friends and family's houses fall apart, is because they just roll them and bake them. And we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna pan fry them in about half an inch of uh, vegetable oil, and then we're gonna finish them off in the oven. That way they'll brown on both sides. In the, you know, they'll, they'll brown all the way in the pan. They'll be fried up, most, mostly cooked by frying, and then we're gonna finish them off in the oven. All right, so I'm just going to, and you can make the meatballs whatever size you want, but just remember that the bigger the, bigger the size of the meatball, the longer they're going to take to fry and bake. So um, you're going to want to use your, like I'm going to make these in about the size of a golf ball, but uh, you know, you go to some of those Italian restaurants and they got those, those great big them great big meatballs, you just gotta be careful because you, you're gonna wanna use your, your, your um, temperature thermometer in those because um, you'll only be able to fry them so long before they get super thick and uh, they'll be super tough on the outside frying them and it'll still be super raw in the middle. So you'll have to bake those for a longer time. And if you're making giant meatballs, I wouldn't have your oven set to 400. I probably do giant meatballs at about 325, and then temp them every 20 to 15 minutes or so until they reach at least 100. And uh, you'd want those being uh, about 160 degrees. 
being with this being ground pork and that you want them at least to be 100, 160 to 170 degrees because these have pork and being uh, ground beef you don't want to cook these rare medium rare medium you want them to be cooked well done all right so this is all i'm doing is i'm, I'm rolling after i'm done rolling these i'll show you how we start to cook them on the uh on the uh, on the stove top see you then all right so i lied we ended up making 51 meatballs <laughs> so we are going to turn this pan on a medium flame i always grab the wrong one all right and we're going to know the grease is hot enough because i, I purposely saved a little piece if if there's any breading or anything yeah but uh, keep a little bit that's per good and you're gonna need to add, add oil as you go along all right when that starts when that little piece of meat starts to to bubble the oil is hot enough so we'll we'll bring you back when it's time to start frying these up okay as you can see the uh the beef in the pan or the meat in the pan starting to bubble so we're gonna just take these you can use your tongs and we're just gonna fry them up and you know you might not have to add oil and you don't need a helper. I just got a helper because we're making so many. Um, we're gonna let them fry for a little bit, and roll them around in the grease. Now, depending on how many you're, how many meatballs you're cooking, um, you might not have to add oil to the pan. You might have to add a ton of oil to the pan because they will soak. They will soak up the oil, and that is a uh, another variable to the recipe. I talk about a lot of variables. If you wanted to use like. Um, like if you went to uh, a specialty grocery store and you bought a, a flavor infused oil, like a cilantro oil or a red a red pepper oil, you know you could you could fry these up in that, and that would be a you know an extra extra little layer of flavor flavor for these. So we're going to turn you off for now, and then we'll turn you back on once we start rolling these around. All right, we got Mama Bear here in the kitchen, and it's just like that. As soon as you see them start to turn brown. Flip them around. Now we're gonna probably have to roll these on each, about probably three different times, top, bottom, and then the side. I mean it. All right, so we're just gonna keep flipping them and frying them until they're all pretty much a uniform color. And then we're gonna put them back on the baking sheet and finish them in the oven. We're just gonna keep doing that. Now I have two frying pans. I got another pan you can't see, just starting to heat up, um, just cause I made so many meatballs. But like I said, this isn't a competition or a race. If this is something that takes you all day, or maybe you only make one pan. You only you make a smaller recipe. It doesn't it doesn't matter. So catch you in a few minutes. All right, and once the bottoms and tops are done, you're just gonna you know get them on their sides for a little bit, just to, so they don't fall apart in the oven. So these will take a little bit to pan fry. And once the side's done, we'll get them on the others, and then this batch will be done. And we'll get the next batch of raw meatballs cooking. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right, so Mama Bear series just doing our weather pan, but like I said, that's just because we're, you know, I try to make these videos where we don't need help, but Mama Bear wanted to help. So we're going to flip those meatballs around one more time, and then they're going to be all set for the oven. All right, we'll see you once we pull them off and get another batch started. All right, now that they are all, show, Jesse, show them one. It's just so you can, they can see that it's the ground on all sides. All right, once they're pretty uniformly brown, the oven's got a little red spot on it, but that's fine. I'll finish up in the oven. We're gonna, uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna uh, put these meatballs back on the baking sheet, and then we'll bake them all at the same time. I like doing things all together. If I multi, you know, I don't want to be frying some, baking some. That's how I get confused. I like doing things in steps. So we're gonna. We're gonna pan fry these. Keep doing that with all these and then I'll show you once it's time to put them in the oven, okay? See you then. And we're still just frying away. A Couple more minutes and then we'll put these in the oven. I got the oven set at 400. Um, if you get them all uniformly brown like this, I'm gonna say about 15, 20 minutes, we're gonna check them, see if they're 160 degrees. If you don't have 160 to 170. If you don't have a thermometer, crack one in half, see if it's cooked. You don't want any pink in there because of the pork. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Um, okay, so without saying, you know, without, let your grease cool down. 
Um, you're gonna just want to throw that away, not dump it down the sink because with adding the hamburger and pork fat to it, it can coagulate and clog your pipes. All right, so we're putting these in the oven, 20 minutes, 400. We'll take a temp, and we'll see you then. We have five minutes left. I just want like so the grease. I let it cool down a little bit, and then the meat pan or the the meat packaging. I just dumped the grease right into so it can finish cooling down and then get thrown out. Um, that's just a do-it-yourself kind of a thing to get rid of grease. All right, we'll check these meatballs in a second. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. I'm just going to grab a pan to show you folks. All right. If you don't have a meat thermometer, you're going to want to crack one of these in half. Take like, like the biggest one on this tray, because if the biggest one's done, then the smallest one will be done. So we will... fork cracking it open can you see in there absolutely no pink these are done all right thanks for watching making meatballs and these 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 i'm going to put these in a gallon side storage bag these will freeze for a long time so that's why i made such a big batch so nothing beats homemade meatballs with all your favorite dishes thanks for watching